All right, uh, we've got boards back from PCB Way. Thank you for supplying boards for the channel. Um, and these will be available on my share site, of course. And they they look good. We have uh, MSI Dog on the back there with his 8080 uh, MSI computer. And uh, so to be uh, uh, to, to point it out, I made these boards uh, 0.8 millimeters thick. All right, why? I don't know. I just decided to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are thin boards. Um, I think they'll work fine if they're thick also, um, but thinner, uh, the impedances will be a little bit better, but that's a different story. Um, so yeah, let's get one built. I printed out a schematic here. Let's take a look at it. Uh, everything's kind of small here. So, um, yeah. Uh, we are going to be using 3.3 volt VCC, and if you do the calculations for the resistor values, it's in the data sheet. Um, the thevel of an equivalence are 133 ohms and 82 ohms, so that's what we'll need to load here. Now, I'm not sure if we should be uh, leaving pin 1 unconnected or tied high or tied low, so I'm just going to leave those two resistors off. They're just there uh, to make it uh, universal. And we'll put in a 0.1 ohm resistor, uh, a capacitor, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, get this thing built. We have uh, several to choose from. So the first one I'm going to choose, I don't know. Let's choose the middle one here. Let's choose uh, five megahertz. All right, so five megahertz. Uh, let's get him out of the package and see if he fits the uh, fits the layout. I did confirm this. Uh, you can print boards out one to one on your printer, and then see if they see if you think they fit the fit the uh, the footprint. These look just fine. These look just fine. So yeah, I'll get these all put together, and we'll pop them in the oven and uh, bake, and uh, we should have a board. All right, uh, we have the board loaded up, and uh, I've got a bunch of test points on it. So I've got 3.3 volts going into VCC. And then I'm monitoring the uh, plus clock and the minus clock uh, on on the device. Remember, it is a, a low voltage CMOS, which means it's a differential pair, and so we should see uh, 180 degrees out of phase with the two with the two clocks. And that is what we see here. We see we have two clocks uh, out of phase with one another, um, and. Uh, so if you're going to be using these things, you have to remember that these are not drop-in replacements for uh, just 3.3 volt logic. They're not just drop-in replacements for 5 volt logic with a divider on or whatever. These are the LVS, LVD, L I forget the, the, the acronym, but yeah, these are meant to be used in differential pair systems. So you should actually run this into a receiver chip and the receiver chip then recovers this. So if you take a look at where things are, we have um, uh, the center line here is at about 1.96 volts, okay? It does not go down to ground. Ground is down here. And 3.3 is one, two, 3.3 is up, up near the top there. Oops, I just touched the darn screen. I hate this touch screen, I should turn it off. This is actually a button over here. I can just turn it off, but I never do. All right, so uh, let's see. I could figure, tell you where the 3.3 volt is. Yeah, the 3.3. I'm using my trigger voltage. Yeah, 3.3 is way up there, okay? So it's in the middle, okay? And uh, that is exactly the way the way these chips work. You have this uh, these plus and minus clocks, and they kind of go around the middle. And uh, that's why you use this thevel and equivalent circuit here to kind of throw it in the middle um, and, and do the balancing and stuff. Anyway, you need to read up on these chips and uh, use them with the, uh, with the correct, correct output. I don't think you can trick them into doing anything but this. I don't think you can get them, I don't think you can trick them, trick them into going all the way to ground. You have to have a receiver chip that then can translate those voltages to something usable. Um, so if you have a circuit that can use this type of signal, then great. If you don't, then these chips are gonna give you a headache. Uh, but they do seem to work okay. Let's make sure this is outputting five megahertz. Measure, counter, yeah, we have five megahertz uh, resolution. 
uh, yeah, 5.000, yeah. So it's a very nice, accurate clock. All right, well, there you go. Uh, this was by viewer request again. And uh, so my uh, information for him is uh, the boards will be available on PCB Way. Uh, make sure you make them, it doesn't really matter, but I made them 0.8 millimeters thick. Um, they work great, work just fine. Uh, the only problem is going to be the voltage signals that you get out of these things. Uh, the other problem you're going to get is you either have to buy them from the company program to exactly the right frequency that you want, or um, you have to buy an expensive programmer and figure out how to do that. Um, it's not there's not enough information to build your own programmer, not that I've found. Let me know anybody who has figured out how to program these things uh, by themselves. Um, it might be trivial, but I just don't have that information. Um, but you can get them pre-programmed. Cur right, uh, currently I am floating pin one. Uh, it's n neither pulled high nor low, and it does seem to be, it does seem to be working fine. So, uh, yep, there you go. All right, that has been the SIT9121 from, from S-Time, the uh, micro-machined uh, uh, clock generators.